So hello YouTubers, uh, let's continue with the series. We have just uh, populated a data grid with uh, with uh, keys that came from uh, dropdown. Now, what if that data grid is located in a different page? Uh, we have to find a way to pass that the, the, the dropdown parameters to the new page and then also populate the grid there. Um, two ways of commonly do this is using the session object or query string. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at both of those. Um, I am going to open the same project that we have been working with and in here I'm just gonna make some changes um, first of all I'm gonna get rid of those labels uh, I'm not gonna delete them I'm just going to comment the definition out so now when we look at the design we don't see them anymore um, I'm gonna leave that in there okay so let's create a second page add new item it's going to be a web form. I'm just going to leave the default name default to. And then inside default to, I'm going to drop in a data grid. A grid view. And also, I am going to drop a SQL data source. SQL data source. Back to the design, I'm going to go ahead and configure the SQL data source. And Keep in mind that what we have in the dropdown on default.aspx, the previous page, is the publisher ID. So that's the key that we are going to use to populate this grid. We're going to populate the grid with the titles. And so we want to display title, the price, and the publication date. Um, and then right now on the where clause, that's where we're going to set the... Uh, let's first do the session and we do the query string after. The column where the where clause is going to act upon is going to be the uh, publisher ID. The operator is going to be equal. So we want all titles equal to a specific pu publisher ID. And the source, remember on the previous video, we did control because it was on the same page. But here, I don't have a control. So I, the only control I have is the grid view control. So I can't use the drop down control because it's located in a different, a different scope, right, on the previous page. So what we are going to do is use the session, OK? Um, we have to give it a name. It's whatever name you want to, um, something that is identifiable. So I'm just going to call it P-U-B ID. So pub ID. And I'm going to click Add and click OK. Click Next. We can do the same test. Um, I know that there's a publisher number 0877. So that shows data. Very good. And then this I'm going to set to that. Um, SQL data source. Okay, so that's our page. If I set, if I start now my project on this page, so I'm going to right click default to uh, set a start page. Uh, this should this, this shouldn't show me anything actually. It didn't even like it. Oh, okay, okay. okay. I need to do some other fixing before we do that. So I uh, commented out the code in here and inside inside the CS file, I, I'm, I still have some references there. So let me go ahead and take care of that. Let me go ahead and start one more time. So notice that this is default to the ISPX and nothing shows up because when the page loads, it's looking for the session ID, pub ID, and it's not finding anything. So it displays nothing, okay? So let's go ahead and then right click the default the ISPX. Uh, actually first, stop debugging. Right click default the ASPX and set as the start page. And in here, I'm going to right click and go to a view code. And inside the drop down selected index change, I'm going to say that so when this event fire, I'm going to say session. And we name the session pub ID, right? I'm going to say session pub ID is going to is going to equal to drop down list dot selected value. Remember in the previous video, selected value is is the uh, is the field that actually contains the uh, publisher ID, not the name of the publisher, but the publisher ID. Once I populate the uh, session value with the selected value from the drop down, I'm going to redirect this page to the new page on the server side, and so. Um, response dot redirect and then the page that we're trying to reach is the default to the ISPX so 
default to the ASPX. So this is what this line does is simply redirects the user from this page to the new page. So he calls the new page. Let's go ahead and then take a look at it to see how that works. I'm going to change this to a new. And you can see now that we're no longer in default ISPX, but default ISPX2, and our grid is full of data. Okay, So that's one way to pass information to a new table using the session object. And keep in mind that the session object no, not only takes the strings, but also take very complex objects. If you have like a person class and or or a collection of of um, of, of people, you know, and this very large objects or, or data structures, you can also assign those objects into a session and pass it anywhere. So it's a very versatile um, object. Now let's take a look at the um, at the query string. Actually, I'm going to do the query string on another video. Okay. So stay tuned, watch the next one.